G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here. What is Sea Life London Aquarium UK like now is reopened with COVID-19 measures in place? Is it worth going? What has changed? What is the experience like? We'll cover this in the video and give our thoughts and first-hand experiences of family. We'll do a full time-lapse tour of the Sea Life London Aquarium UK in about 10 minutes. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. We spent the day at Sea Life London Aquarium UK August 23rd, 2020, six weeks after it reopened, so it's had some time to bed in the new coronavirus safety guidelines and will give you a sense of if Sea Life London Aquarium is worth visiting and what it is like now. To get to Sea Life London Aquarium, you'll most likely have to take public transport of some form. We took the overground and the underground slash tube, so now you have to wear a face mask and the trains and train stations are signposted about this everywhere. We caught a 9am train on a Sunday morning so it was relatively empty and these shots give you a sense of that. We came out at Westminster train station and you can see Big Ben there just off to the right and so it's a quick trip over the bridge here and you have the London Eye there on the left and the Sea Life Aquarium London is actually there on the right a little bit so nice leisurely walk across the bridge here so it's really nice to come out and you can see all the iconic landmarks as we go in through some of the ticketing lines and security the film will drop in and out for obvious reasons you've got to go through and pre-book here we're coming up to security this is really cool coming up here you get to walk over the tank with the sharks in the bottom there they're actually alive but you can think that they're sleeping uh, here we just went down the stairs rather than take the elevators you can take the elevators in family groups this is one you do need to book in advance of and we are finding that tickets for the next couple of days were not available so you do need to plan it a little bit more in advance than some other ones going through here it takes about an hour to get through we were doing it not so much a brisk pace but you know with little kids they get bored pretty easily so if you wanted to you know, really absorb it and take it in it'll take a lot longer and you've got this tank over here which then you wrap around all the time in terms of social distancing they were pretty good for the most part like here you're having to queue and actually wait which is quite nice because then you can actually go through this section at your own pace whereas previous times we've been here pre-covid people are just all over the place and on top of you and it's less pleasant like that's been the really nice thing about this is the social distancing aspect and the way that they're limiting it particularly when you come in you have to be within about 15 minutes of your allocated time slot it's not like oh i can turn up half an hour hour early or later so and here's some fluorescent coral which uh, the kids really enjoyed looking at again this easter island head tank that you keep on coming back and seeing from all different angles so there's no point worrying about or freaking out if you don't see it the first time or people are there in front of you of course you're always going to get some numpties who are completely oblivious to the social distancing which ironically enough we always found it was actually the elderly people actually people over 60 70 years old which could get a little bit frustrating because you're there waiting your turn you know and respecting the distances but then they just come and walk and stop right in front of you and say oh, what's going on here here you've got uh, the different turtles and reptiles and I think we're coming up to a part where there's some crocodile or there is a crocodile lying there on the log as well. For the most part it seemed like all the attractions and everything that you'd normally see were there. There's this section here where I think they took out a few things that you couldn't touch because cleats, kids would be normally climbing all over it and for obvious reasons you can't do that. So here we go up one level and there's some VR stuff there. They do have a section coming up here where you can touch the starfish and sea urchins and things of that nature, which you can still completely do. Now, Merlin, which owns Sea Life, also owns Chessington World of Adventure. And when we were out at Chessington a week ago, you couldn't touch anything because they had taken away all that. So it's completely inconsistent. This is something which the kids always love, which is the penguin type area. So you can get up really close to them. And it does get a little bit chilly in here because for obvious reasons, they're keeping the penguins a little bit cold. And the kids can pop up in those little domes and you know still interact with all the hand parts the vast majority of this next section is all video based and interactive apart from that tank so you know they do a good job on it but it's still not the real animals 
this is a mock shark cage you can get into with all the sharks over there and now heading into the jellyfish area where you have the lights always changing colors and then the jellyfish then naturally being reflecting that sort of light and things so you see them change into all the different colors and there's another interactive game where you can create your own jellyfish get more jellyfish here bouncing up and popping around and another section with more jellyfish before you then exit through the gift shop going up this set of stairs here and out through the side entrance and back onto the river thames area where you started initially when you first walked in and heading down towards the london eye is sea life london aquarium worth it absolutely it seems that with lockdown and pretty much no tourists numbers are limited and it's a super nice experience for the most part you don't have people climbing all over you social distancing is generally adhered to and staff do try to ensure this happens legoland and chessington world of adventures which merlin entertainment also owns are the complete opposite of this you wouldn't even know social distancing as a thing and we're in a pandemic click around the video to see what legoland is like recently Pretty much most of the attraction is here, including the interactive ability to touch some of the sea creatures. Again, other Merlin Entertainment attractions have these closed. That is the thing with this. You have a parent organization, but each attraction seems to have its own interpretation and implementation of COVID guidelines. Click around the video to see Chessington World of Adventures and how their hands-on interactivity touch sessions is closed. We are Merlin Premier Annual Pass holders. Standard ones don't usually give you access to the attractions during school holidays. We're definitely going to try to come back in the next month or so. Who knows how good it will last like this, so take advantage of it while you can. Kids always remember the penguins and probably their favourite part of the day. If you've enjoyed and or gotten something out of this video, then hit that thumbs up button and even consider subscribing. Would you go? If you've been, what do you think? Sound off in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. We're just going to let the video run with some other relaxing shots from Sea Life London Aquarium. At the moment, with generally no tourists in London, visiting castles and other attractions are fantastic days out, particularly if you get annual passes that let you into multiple attractions. Like this one of the Tower of London, which houses the Crown Jewels. Normally during peak season, you'd get 13,000 visitors a day. They are struggling to get 1,000 visitors a day now, and the place feels almost deserted. Click around the video for more. More information. We'll put links to other London based attractions we've been to recently so you consider going or if you aren't local can watch the time lapse portion of the video and do a full tour of these attractions you might not otherwise see in less than 10 minutes. That's it from us here at Family Bricks until next time when we talk about all things lifestyle.